friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video I am going to be putting together my last two spreads using the Strong Story Kit from Allie Edwards for Story Kit Crush. This is a series where I pull out one kit every month from Allie Edwards to use it up throughout the course of the month trying to get as much of that product used and as many stories told as possible. So today I am telling two different stories. The first is a story all about um, the definitions of strong for each of our family members. So one day we were in the car and I just asked everybody, you know, what does it, what does strong mean to you? What does it mean to be strong? So I have Jonah, Isabella, Aaron, and my answer to that question. And I'm planning to just pair that with a bunch of photos that uh, show our family as one strong unit or just each of us in individual positions where we are strong. So this is going to go on a 12 by 12. I am planning to fussy cut the title out of this card and then that one should be pretty simple to put together. The other story I have today is all about strengths finders. So this is a spread that I essentially scrap lifted from Morgan Beale. Um, all about my five strengths from the Strengths Finders test. I am putting a little bit of a twist on mine, putting it inside of a traveler's notebook, and I'm going to create a pocket where I have five cards, which will be turned into tags, one for each of my strengths. And then I'm going to use my stamps to create titles on each of those. And then I'm pairing it with this four by four card that just has the word strength on it. Um, and then a piece of paper from American Crafts. This is an old one from Fifth and Monaco. Uh, let me see if it has the name on it. It doesn't look like it does. Or just Pink Paisley. Oh, it's paper number seven. That's what we've got. Fifth and Monaco, paper number seven. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put you on fast forward while I get everything assembled. Um, and then once I've got that all completed, we'll slow back down to finish out our video for today. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so we're going to get started by working on my 12 by 12 grid page first. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this word or these words fussy cut out from the journaling card here. And some of them do interact with the edges of the card. So, you know, it's just kind of playing around with it and trying to get it as evenly cut out as possible so we can still read what the word says. And I think it looks totally fine. Like even though the top of the word this is flat, I still think it looks really good this way. So I'm happy with that. So I have this is strong and I'm, I'm planning to layer them up in that middle heart, just as you can see it there. Next, what I needed to do was trim down my photos. So I printed my photos at, um, they are three inches by four inches with a white border around the outside. Now the inside portion of that photo is 2.75 inches by 3.75 inches. That's just one of the ways or the way that I actually get the white borders around my photos is I crop them down to the um, three or 2.75 by 3.75 and then I add the photo on top of a three by four canvas that is white and merge everything together. So that's something I do in Photoshop. Now, um, when I put them all on my 12 by 12 paper, I realized like, wait a second, I actually don't want the white around it because my uh, textured white cardstock is going to be the white around it. And then if I were to have them all be the full size, it just wouldn't fit as nicely as I want it to. So I cut off all of my white borders, which left all of my photos at the 2.75 by 3.75. And then once I did that, I'm going to move on to my title piece or move back to my title piece, I should say. So I used some double-sided adhesive to put the title onto the heart. That I feel very comfortable with that it will stay attached and on the heart because number one, uh, anytime you add adhesive to felt, it's going to stick really, really strong just because of the fibers and, and everything there. It's just um, getting adhesive off of felt is kind of a pain. So I know that it's going to stick well there. And then the double-sided adhesive is really strong. So I just know that it's going to be okay. And then I'm also putting this inside of a page protector. So I know that it's going to be a little bit protected in that sense as well. If this was outside, I probably would have stitched it onto the heart just to be safe, but 
you know, like I said, it's going inside. So once I had that done, the next thing I'm going to do is add a tiny bit of, bit of adhesive onto the back side of my photos. And I also stapled one of those plastic phrases onto each of the photos in the bottom middle. You need to remove the film that goes on top of those. You can just kind of scratch at it and it will come off. And then I stapled it on there. And for the photos that are not quite three inches wide, I did just trim off the excess that goes on both of the sides. So and it looks totally fine. Then I added some adhesive into the middle of those photos and positioned them down. That's one of my favorite ways to make sure that everything is where I want it to go without everything jostling around if I bump it or something. So it just gives me a little bit of adhesion in the middle, letting me place everything where I want it to go. And then when I feel confident with that, I can pull it back up and then fully adhere everything down pressing it to the paper and know that it's exactly where I want it to go. So um, the heart itself, I also added some more of that double-sided adhesive to the back of it and then stuck that into the middle section of this grid, which I love the way that that looks because it's the only thing that's not straight lines. And so your eye is really drawn to the middle portion. And then I went ahead and date stamped that spread as well. And then that one is done. So that one wasn't super difficult. Um, just, you know, finagling some things. And I loved being able to use up all of those plastic phrases. So that was a win in my book. For this next one, I am creating a traveler's notebook layout. So the first thing I did was take this fifth and Monaco paper and I'm trimming it down to four and a quarter wide by eight and a quarter tall. Now I want there to be a pocket on this page because that's where all of those tags are going to go inside of. And I want this to be not quite the full length or the full width of my traveler's notebook paper. I believe I cut it down to four inches by maybe two and a half inches or three. And then I'm going to use just an alligator clip to hold my vellum because that's what I'm using for my pocket. Um, I'm clamping that down on the vellum and the page itself so that it holds it in place while I get two of the sides stitched and then I can remove the clip and stitch the last side. That is my trick for uh, stitching some things down like, like vellum where if I had put adhesive on the back to hold it in place, you would have seen the adhesive through the vellum. So it just is a way for me to keep things in place while I am sewing them together. Um, yes. So there we go, we've got my pocket created. And I will also mention the reason why I didn't want to do it as wide as the page is because once I get it adhered into my traveler's notebook, I generally have to trim off a little bit on the side. So um, I didn't want to trim off the portion that I stitched down and then my pocket to be broken. So that's why I made it slightly narrower than the paper itself. Now we're going to move on to my tags. So these tags are printed, let's see here, six, six and a half inches, it looks like, by about three inches or three and a half inches wide, maybe three and a half. So I'm using one of my tags from the Ali Edwards December Daily release to give me the corners so I can chop the corners off of all the sides. And then I'm using my power punch in order to get the hole in the middle. I put one in the first one to use as a template and then just stacked them all up together and punched it all at once. That's the nice thing about the power punch is it goes through a lot, a lot of layers very easily. Now to help make this a little bit uh, more fun, let's say, I am taking some of the scrap pieces of that fifth and Monaco paper the back side was a striped uh, white and black. So I used my um, whole reinforcer punch from We Are Memory Keepers in order to create 10 of those little O's, which are basically a whole reinforcer. So then I can use some liquid glue, add that on there, and then put one on the front and one on the back of the hole for each of those tags. So it's going to make the tag a little bit sturdier, especially where the twine is going to go through later. But it also helps, it also just helps to make it look a little bit more um, a little bit fancier, I guess, than just having a plain old hole at the top. 
So then I'm taking the card that says strength. It's the four by four card. And I'm just chopping off the title piece. And I'm going to add that right above all of those tags at the top, keeping it fairly centered there, um, which is nice. I like the way that the all of the black elements in this spread pop off of the background being like those really bright green almost palm branches i thought that that looked really good um and and like summery but also not too bright summery if that makes sense i just i, I really liked it then i'm going to start working on each of the individual tags so i pulled out the four by six um stamps they're alpha stamps from Allie Edwards these ones were released fairly recently they are the same ones as the one little word alphabets but the smaller version I believe they are still available in the shop and I will definitely have those linked below I am using those to stamp out each of my five strengths so mine are discipline learner um I gotta think Pfft. discipline learner what is my next one? Discipline. We'll get there. We're going to see it. I know I've got input is my last one. Focus is my fourth one. Or no, maybe it's input then focus. Learner, input, focus. That's hilarious. I can't see it. Okay, well, we'll, we'll find out eventually because I forget what my five are. Um, Anyway, I stamped all of those out as my titles for my stamps there, and I used the Ali Edwards Mackenzie Green, which is a really dark green, and I, I liked the way that that played off of those dark green palm branches, so it, it they just went really well together. So then I'm going to try something a little bit different. I grabbed over my watercolor set. These are just like a cheapo watercolor set from Michaels, I think, and I also grabbed the filled in circle stamps. So it's just like a solid circle that's kind of small. I think it's about an inch wide. And I am using different shades of green watercolor and I'm watercoloring basically on top of my acrylic stamp and then stamping it onto paper. I wanted to do this because I wanted there to be a little bit more color variation in this portion in this little stamp bit right here because I will eventually stamp inside of those circles the number one through five but um, I just wanted it to be a little bit different a little bit more artsy I don't know. And then I also was very inspired by, I think, I don't know if Morgan watercolored hers, but, or she might have taken them from the digital. There was a card that had one, two, three um, with green circles and they were watercolor circles. So I really just loved the look of that. So I thought, well, why can't I just do this myself? So that's what I'm doing. Um, on all five of these cards, I'm stamping the circle above the word whatever the word is above my strength. So kind of closer to the circle, leaving a little bit of space underneath because I also want to add something underneath. Oh, there it is, achiever, there. So maybe, wait, I'm achiever? Discipline's number three. That's why I was confused, you guys. I am achiever, learner, discipline, input, focus. Or it might've been focus input. We'll find out again when we, as we put this together. See, all this stuff is still fairly new to me that I don't have it all memorized. Anyway, um, I am setting all of that watercolor stuff to the side to dry while it is drying. And that's because I didn't want, I wanted there to be, um, I wanted it to be as saturated on the circle as possible. And I felt like if I used my heat gun, that that would take away from that or it would spread it out too much. And I just wanted to let it dry. I had some time, so why not? And then in the meantime, I am attaching in the main pages into my notebook. You can see here that the middle portion is starting to come undone from the staples. That's okay. Once I get this album filled up to my liking, I will actually take those staples out anyway and stitch this book closed. I prefer my traveler's notebooks to be stitched. Um, they feel a little bit sturdier that way. They seem to always break apart with staples. So I just leave the staples in and then eventually I will remove them and sew it. Cause yeah, why not? Okay, so then I've got my photo in there and my photo is just gonna be a photo. I don't even think I embellish it at all. It's just like a silly photo to go next to it. I guess it's not silly, it's just, a selfie or whatever but that is next to my 
pocket page here. And then I am trimming off the excess and you can see that I almost still put that pocket too close to the edge. It made it, it's okay. Um, but I definitely could have put it closer to the inside. Oh well. Now we're going to work on finishing up these tags. So they have dried, it looks really cool. See how, I mean, you guys, that looks so cool the watercolor portion. I grabbed my story stamp back over again, and this time I am grabbing the stamp that says current strengths, because that makes sense. And I'm using my scrapbook.com black permanent, permanent, <laughs> I don't know why I said permanent, black premium dye ink, and I am stamping current strengths underneath the circle and above the different um, strengths or the different, you know, whatever those are, titles. So that goes in between. And then once I have that on all five of these tags, we're gonna start working on the numbers. So I thought it would be really fun to try and stamp numbers inside of the circles, and I'm going to use the same stamp set from earlier. It also has the numbers one through eight, which you just flip around the six and that gives you the nine. So it has all of the numbers that we need. Um, and for each of them, I'm going to stamp a zero and then the number, so zero, one, zero, two, zero, three. And um, I thought it would be fun to try embossing that. I haven't embossed anything in a very long time. In fact, I got this scrapbook.com embossing ink pad. It's like clear embossing ink and I've never even used it. I feel like I've had it for a couple months and just like never used it. So this was my chance to finally pull it out and use it. So I stamped down the zero one. I grabbed a little paintbrush in case any of the embossing powder got to a place where I didn't want it to go so I could swipe it away. And then I'm going to just set them to the side after, you know, the ink is on or the embossing powder is on the ink. And then I'll heat it up here in a second once I get a couple of these going. Um, another trick that I learned from a friend is to grab a to grab a filter, like you can see to my left, and use that as a place to shake off the excess powder. The nice thing about it is that you can just funnel the powder back down into the container later. So it, it basically catches it and then helps you to put it back so that you don't waste any of your embossing powder. Um, and then I'm just adding enough powder on top of the numbers just to cover the numbers and that's it. So it's not really getting everywhere. It's I'm keeping my spot pretty darn clean, really. I think after this one, I'm going to start heating them up. I have a heat gun going. Um, I felt at this point that I kind of wanted to see what they would look like once I started heating them up. They turn a nice white, um, like a really nice white, and I, I love the way that it looks. So then we're going to finish this up with number four and number five. So if you've never heard of strengths finders before, it is basically a personality test of sorts, which if you didn't know, I am a psych major um, from college. That's what I got my degree in. And I'm fascinated with anything to do with personalities or brain functions or like all that stuff just like totally gets me all geeked out. Um, so I had never heard of strengths finders before, until we were in a discussion about it with the Allie Edwards creative team and a bunch of them had taken it. Morgan Beals, like a strengths finders, like expert, I would say. And uh, she was getting us all to take the test. So I thought it would be really fun to go and take it. Basically, um, it puts you in a lot of like, there's a bunch of questions about situations and how would you respond? And like, you know, is this more you or is this more you? You know, typical type of, um, personality test. But then um, the answers, what it tells you are things that you are really good at, like things that you have a strength in. Like for example, one of my strengths is achiever. And it'll tell you, you know, here's what people who score high in achiever are really good at and things that you might be really good at. And um, you get your top five. I think there's 34 four total but you get your top five and then in like let's say a work setting you could compare different strengths and then help that to figure out how to function as a team and all that kind of stuff but for me it's just really interesting to learn that kind of stuff about myself um you know definitely definitely enjoy that 
So I've gotten all of those done. I grabbed over some black and white twine, keeping with that black and white and green theme. I tied them all loosely together, put a bow in there, and then I'm just going to stick all five of these down into the pocket in my traveler's notebook there. And then this spread is also done. All right, friends, that completes my last two spreads with the Strong Story Kit. I am super pleased with both of these. I think they both came out just fabulous. So we've got the This is Strong Story. That's just our definition of strong for the various people in our family and photos that I felt like went along with the theme. And then my Traveler's Notebook uh, Strength Finders pocket with all of my different strengths my top five strengths are in here so we've got one two three four and five i tied this loose enough that they can still be turned so we can still see them all but they are kept together and i like the little pop of black and white in there as well so i'm just going to stick that back down in there and then we are going to call this one good all right, well, I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of these spreads come together. If you did, I would love a thumbs up on this video down below. And make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see all of my future crafty content. Next month, we are going to be starting our next round of Story Kit Crush. I'm going to be working through the Laugh Story Kit. So, um just working with lots of different ideas for different stories to tell and seeing how much of that kit I can use up, which hopefully I can do all of it yet again. If you would like to join in with the laugh kit or any story kit that you have in the month of August, I would be so, so happy to see all of your projects. Just hashtag them with story kit crush so I can be sure to see them, read them and share them over on Instagram. All right, friends. Well, that's going to do it for me today. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Enjoy your weekend and I will catch you in the next video. Bye friends. <laughs>